Hi, I'm Aubrey Lisicki, licensed massage therapist, teacher, and writer. Welcome to part two of our lecture series on breast health and breast self-care. In part one, we reviewed the breast anatomy as well as discussed simple things that women can do to promote their own breast health, particularly breast self-massage. In part two, we're going to see a common case that many women experience of, my doctor found a lump, what should I do now? But first, I need to remind you that I am not a physician and breast massage is not a cure for cancer. If you have any questions about your breast health, you should discuss these with a qualified physician. Breast massage can be an important addition to an integrative approach for breast health care as well as breast cancer treatment. So now let's talk about Gina. Gina is a woman in her late 40s who has decided that it's time for her to start having mammograms. She knows that her grandmother had breast cancer late in life and she is concerned that she might have the genes for this disease. She schedules a visit with her physician and he does a breast exam. When he does the exam, he finds some questionable changes in the tissue and he writes her a prescription for a mammogram. Now she's come to my office and I can tell she's very stressed. She says to me, my doctor found a lump. He's not sure what it is. He says it might be benign, but it's very suspicious and it's difficult to tell at this point. He offered to do a biopsy right now, but he said that he would be willing to check it again in six weeks. Then we can see if it was tissue change due to my hormonal cycle. This is where I start to discuss with women what some of their options are and what they can do for themselves in this six week period between the original exam and the follow up with the doctor. One of the first things that I want women to do is to ask their doctor for more information. Can they get a copy of the report? By right, this is the woman's information and she has full access to her health records. She can also obtain an image from the x-ray mammogram. These are important things that she should keep with her and use this data to review her breast health with other physicians should she seek a second opinion. With the information from this report, she can start to examine her own breast and see if she can feel this lump that has been found on the imaging. Another route she might go is to see if there are any less invasive procedures that she could have to get another picture of the lump that doesn't involve scar tissue from a biopsy. These studies, besides mammography, include an ultrasound, an MRI, or a thermography. Let's discuss the differences between some of these studies. Mammogram is an x-ray and does use radiation. A mammogram shows changes in the breast tissue density as well as calcifications in the breast tissue. The problem is that some changes in breast density are not a tumor and some are. As well, some calcifications in the breast are cancerous and some are benign. This means that this test offers many false positives and false negatives. So there is concern about the accuracy of these findings. It is also important to note that mammograms are less accurate in premenopausal women. As to ultrasound, ultrasound is a great way to see a live picture of a lump in motion. This is a non-invasive test using an ultrasound probe that is the same technology as when a woman goes to check during pregnancy on the health of her fetus. What we can see with the ultrasound is if the lump is a fluid filled cyst, it will squish underneath the ultrasound, whereas a tumor will tend to remain hard and solid and will not respond to the pressure of the ultrasound probe. There's another option for imaging now, which is thermography. Thermography is a thermal image of the breast which can show physiological changes in the breast. This was developed after it was discovered that an area of a tumor shows changes 
that will actually express themselves as temperature changes in the skin above the tumor. With a thermal image, we can start to see things in the physiological changes of the breast that may not be seen in a mammography or in an ultrasound or MRI. Possibly this would be an earlier indicator of changes to come in the breast tissue. These thermography exams are about the same price as an ultrasound, so they are more affordable, even though they are not covered by insurance. The FDA has yet to approve these thermography scans as a screen for breast cancer, but they have deemed them safe to be used by the public. So Gina has lots of options of other ways that she can look at this breast lump. What are some other things that she could do in the meantime? Another thing that I'm doing with Gina is we're doing breast massage together so she can learn more about the tissue changes in her breasts over time. Specifically, we're going to mark the area on her breast that is having a problem with a surgical marker. This surgical marker is non-toxic and it will stay on the skin for about four to six days. So as Gina massages her breast every day over time, she can determine if this exact spot that is questionable is changing and responding to her administration of self-massage. What are other things she can do? She can learn about breast self-check, which we'll discuss in part three. She can also make lifestyle changes, such as starting to exercise, and she can change her diet and reduce her alcohol consumption. So there are many options available to Gina, and she is utilizing all of these before she meets her doctor in six weeks. She will keep a journal of how she's changed her lifestyle and everyday mark changes she's found in her breast tissue and how they correlate to her menstrual cycle. This will bring excellent data to the doctor so he can make a more informed choice on whether he thinks that this is a cancerous lump or likely a benign change due to hormonal fluctuations in Gina. An important point to make right now is that some people have thought that breast massage might spread cancer if it were found that Gina's tumor was in fact metastatic. This is a myth that has been proven to be untrue. So far, there are no studies that show that massage actually spreads cancer cells to other areas of the body. In fact, it is more likely that chemical changes in the system are what are responsible for breast cells metastasizing. In particular, it's been found that stress or influence from the sympathetic nervous system is most likely to lead a tumor to becoming metastatic and spreading through the body. Other chemical changes in the breast can be involved with the estrogen levels or with different estrogen-like molecules that might be in the woman's environment and might be tricking the estrogen receptors such that they respond differently than they would with the woman's own estrogen. Another important point is that we should each individually know our personal statistics for developing breast cancer when we're trying to make decisions about whether or not we might have a lump, a tumor, or a benign cyst. There's an excellent book by nurse Carrie Ann McGinn called The Young Woman's Breast Health Book. What I love about this book is it gives you a detailed analysis of what all the statistics really mean. For example, we all have a 12% chance as a woman of developing breast cancer in our lifetime. When we consider Gina, a woman in her 40s, and we look at the fact that compared to a woman having a 12% chance of developing cancer over her lifetime, she actually only has a 1.45% chance of developing cancer in her 40s. That is similar to a 1 in 69 chance of developing breast cancer. Now this will change throughout her life and she will actually have a 1 in 27 chance of developing cancer in her 70s and further beyond. So this is very important for her to look at her personal situation and her personal chances of developing breast cancer. 
Another significant fact about Gina in her personal history is that she's grown up in Washington State. Washington State is ranked in the top five of states in the United States for development of breast cancer. In fact, all of the top five states are actually located in the northern latitudes of the United States. This begs the question, why hasn't there been more research done in regards to sun exposure or levels of vitamin D in regard to development of breast cancer? So there are many factors in a woman's personal story that can lead to development of breast cancer and these should be taken into account when deciding how to treat or not treat breast cancer or how to proceed with further screenings or biopsies. But the moral of our story is that there are many more things that you can do than sitting around and fretting and chewing your fingernails while you're waiting for this six week checkup with your doctor. We saw how Gina made many changes in her lifestyle and when she returned for her six week checkup, she decided with her doctor that she would do an ultrasound rather than subject her tissues to an invasive biopsy. Fortunately for her, the ultrasound could no longer see any lump and the changes in her tissues from the previous exam were attributed to hormonal cycle fluctuations. So this was a great result for Gina. But now Gina's doctor is suggesting that she return in six months. He would like her to have a repeat mammogram just in case to see if there are any other tissue changes. Gina would like to know what can I do in this six month interim? I don't want to wait that long to see if there are any changes. So in part three, we are going to review how to do a detailed breast self check so that Gina can feel confident when she returns to the doctor in six months and has accurate data for him as to how her breast tissue has changed over time. If you are interested in learning more about breast care and therapeutic breast massage, I teach continuing education classes and am available for public speaking engagements as well as private breast care education sessions. You can reach me at www.breastremedyseattle.com.